I'd like to uh, welcome everybody. I'd like to start off with if we could uh, turn off our cell phones, just a real quick reminder, and uh, I'd ask you to please stand for the presentation of colors. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chaplain Reverend Lactez Vandros for the opening prayer. Here we bow our heads. Almighty God, we invoke your presence this morning at the beginning of this sacred memorial ceremony Remembering 83 years ago, our great city lost 13 firefighters who were called to the Strand Theater fire on March 8, 1941, and sacrificed their lives. Bless our gathering and guide us as we remember their lives that have touched ours, and may this ceremony be a support of peace, love, comfort, and healing for all who mourn. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome the families of those firefighters that were killed and injured on March 10th that are here today. Um, although it was 83 years ago, um, the, deep, the cuts still run deep. And, uh, I know the families, it's the great-grandchildren that are here now, but I'd like to make sure I, that I welcome. I'd also like to welcome uh, the family from Scranton, Pennsylvania, um, of the firefighter that carved our anthracite, William Owen. Uh, the Scranton family is here as well. They made the trip up from Pennsylvania. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'd also like to welcome the Honorable Mayor, Robert Sullivan, members of Local 140, full active and retired, uh, President Emeritus, uh, Local 144, Billy Paolo, President Emeritus, Archie Gormley, our current fire chief, fire chief Brian Ardelli, retired fire chief Ken Gallag Kenneth Galligan, retired fire chief Richard Francis, and retired fire chief uh, Michael Williams. I'd also like to recognize uh, Massachusetts State Fire Marshal uh, John Devine is with us today. Um, I'd also like to welcome my fellow brother firefighter sisters uh, from other communities outside of Brockton, fellow city employees, the residents of Brockton. I'd also like to recognize uh, elected officials that are here today, uh, councils at large, uh, Moses, uh, Moses Rodriguez, I think I saw Moses, I know David Texier is here, uh, Phil Griffin from Ward 3, Susan Castro from Ward 4, uh, Jeffrey Thompson from Ward 5, uh, Jack Lally uh, from Ward 6, um, a state delegation, uh, Senator Mike Brady, uh, State Rep Jerry Cassidy, 
State Rep. Michelle Dubois, uh, State Rep. Rita Mendez, uh, also some county officials that are here, Plymouth County Commissioner Greg Hanley, and uh, Plymouth County Register of Deeds John Buckley. Um, I think I got everybody. I do this every year trying to catch everybody. So if I did forget anybody, I apologize. Uh, with that, I'd like to now invite the Honorable uh, Mayor Robert Sullivan to the podium. Well, good morning, everybody. I want to first of all welcome each and every one of you to City Hall here in the City of Champions, Brockton, Mass. And I want to thank everybody that comes together each and every year. This is a solemn day. It's a day of memory. Uh, the Strand was at 15 School Street, right outside here. This is 45 School Street. So that day, March 10, 1941, the Brave 13 did their job. They went to work like the dedicated men and women that serve and protect the city each and every day right now. And when those 13 perished, they paid the ultimate sacrifice. And I will tell you that the city of Brockton will never forget those Brave 13. There was also 20 non-fatal injured that day as well. So we will always here in the city of Brockton come together to remember. We will continue to explain to the next generation what the Strand Fire means to our city, to our commonwealth, and to our nation. Before 9-11, 13 firefighters lost in Brockton, Massachusetts was the greatest loss in the country until that fateful day on 9-11. I want to thank Bill Hill and 144 members for what you do each and every day. I want to thank our fire chief, Brian Nadelli, for what he does every day. Uh, when we come together, we come together as a community. We are better together. We are the city of champions. The elected officials that are here, the family members that are here, City of Scranton, Pennsylvania, the firefighters in 1941 in the city came to support Brockton, and we will never forget that. I've met with the Scranton Mayor, Page, and I've mentioned how thankful we are. And when we have the family and the great grandkids come here each and every year, it's special, it means something, and we appreciate that journey that you come here. So as mayor and as a, as a kid that grew up in Brockton, I just want to say thank you. Uh, today is a solemn day. We have that wonderful, wonderful memorial outside of City Hall that we will be going to in short order. God bless the Brave 13. God bless the Brockton Fire Department. God bless our city of champions, our commonwealth, and our nation. Thank you. I also like to recognize uh, Councilor at Large Wynn Farwell. He called me yesterday and uh, apologized he wasn't going to be able to make today. So. Uh, with that, I'd like to now invite uh, Chief Brian Nardelli to the podium. Good morning, everyone. Um, a couple of thank yous on my part. Uh, Chief Brenda Perez and the uh, Brockton Police Honor Guard is always here by our side every time we have this memorial, and we truly appreciate that. I think um, when you look out, everything that's set up here, how clean and how beautiful this place is, um, Brian Matter and his staff make sure this is... Uh, in pristine condition for us every year when, when, when we're going to do this, um, whether it be outside, inside. I, obviously, you see we have a little construction going on here today so that we're working around, um, but that's gonna be going on for the betterment of the city as a whole. Um, I'd like to thank Chief Galligan, retired, um, he, for the display he sets up at the back of, um, in the rotunda every year. Um, he is a great historian, not only for the fire service, but also for the city of Brockton. I, I, I cherish the times I had the opportunity to sit with him and, a, and a Mr. Landerholm at the time. And I think the only one that may be able to rival you now and be able to have those conversations is the city clerk, Tim Cruz. Um, so I think, you know, I'd like to sit on, the, in the, on those conversations sometime up to the museum now. Um, again, a special welcome to uh, State Fire Marshal John Davin and uh, the Fire Academy Director Eric Littman. Um, they they trek from Stowe, they trek from other parts of the state, they're all over the place. But to be here today on a very special day for us is, is, is very important. So thank you, gentlemen, for, 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 for being here. Um, I'd especially like to thank um, Bill Hill and the Executive Board of Local 2144. They, um, every day, the membership of Brockton's Local 144 does their job to make this city safe. Um, and, and I can't thank them and his leadership enough in that executive board for what they do. And then putting together such a incredible ceremony that's been handed down from generation to generation. Um, I think when we think about the Strand, I know it comes to this time of year, like September 11th, like anything else, 
we reflect on what was and what now is. And I think when we do that, we think about what happened that night, cold, dreary, early March evening, when firefighters from all over the city responded to what became one of the most, what was one of the most tragic incidents in Massachusetts and here in the city. Those firefighters that left the building that night had no idea, just like ours that stand before you today, had no idea what they were walking into. Fire was out, we were able to, they, the members were able to start overhauling and then something catastrophic happened. Technology has changed over the years. Technology has made firefighting somewhat safer to a degree, whether we're metering for um, gases that are, that are dangerous to health to the firefighters, to the people in the buildings, whether we're able to see through walls with thermal imaging cameras. Just recently, we were able to put personal thermal imaging cameras on the um, apparatus in every riding position. So every member of the Brockton Fire Department, when they come, they have that little bit of extra safety. But at the end of the day, this is a dangerous job. And the one thing that makes you safe and you're able to sleep every night is these brave men and women that stand behind you right here. The mayor has taken the charge um, before as well as since I've been chief to make sure we're fully staffed. And staffing is key to everything we do. I've spoken of it at other times, but I think it's important for everybody to know we currently are in a position where we have not lost a life in the city to fire in the last four years. That is unprecedented for this city. That is unprecedented for a lot of communities. There are many reasons for that. Obviously, Deputy Chief Williams and his crew in the Fire Prevention Bureau and what they do lends a great hand to that. But when you look at the bigger picture, and the ir irony of this is, we've also made 17 rescues out of buildings, over ground ladders, downy aerials in the last four years as well. So that goes to the brave men and women that serve every day but it also goes to our city leaders who have allowed this department to get to a position where staffing is the major component in everything we do. We can have all the shiny red fire trucks, which are very important. We can have those personal thermal imaging cameras, but without the brave men and women of the Brockton Fire Department that go out the door every single day, none of that is possible. I think it's important to point out Deputy Chief Scott Albanese, who's here today. I saw him earlier. I'm not sure where he is now. He did an incredible job of writing a grant last year that brought 16 firefighters to the city of Brockton for the next three years, paid for by the federal government. Um, that has allowed us to put a 10th company back in service here in the city. That hasn't been the case since 1991. When I talk about that, I talk about Deputy Albanese, I talk about Deputy Williams, the other command staff the president and, and the executive board of Local 144, this is a team effort. Nothing happens without a team effort. Firefighting is a team effort. How we go about things is a team effort. I, at this point, have a great opportunity to be able to steer that ship. But without the body, nothing moves forward. So as we remember this day and we remember what happened before us, think of the Martin Lippers and the Chief John Car uh, Captain John Carroll in the Bartholomew Hurleys that passed away that night and understand that their sacrifice not only brought great sadness to the city, but it also brought great change to show that we are better, we can move forward, we have a great department that is ready to put their selves in harm's way every day to protect you. And that's important because I don't know I don't know what it is about a person that signs up for this job. People ask you all the time, what made you want to be a firefighter? And my answer is always, when people call us, we go. I don't care how much money you have. No one here does. We don't care what color, what religion, whatever you are, we will respond and take care of you to the best of our ability, whether that be a fire, a cardiac arrest, someone having a seizure, or sometimes someone just needs you to hold their hand. That is the greatest thing about the fire service, and I don't think you can ever compensate somebody for that dedication to duty. So today, like I said, as we move forward, remember those that were lost before us and other firefighters that have been lost in the line of duty. And think of these brave men and women that leave the building every day and every night to make sure you are safe. God bless each and every one of you. God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Chief. You know, I gotta, I gotta say, I, I'm lucky to have a good partnership with the chief. Um, it's nice to have a chief that um, knows that staffing matters. Um, 
it's you know the most important thing and working as a group uh, two two major things that make this fire department great so thanks chief coming up after him is usually not an easy thing so uh, <laughs> he's always hitting it out of the park thank you so I'd, I'd like to thank everybody for coming today um, as the chief explained we're here uh, to remember the 13 firefighters that were killed on March 10th. Um, you know, when I first got on the job, my first uh, ceremony, uh, there was the, the actual memorial was over inside here. It wasn't in the rotunda. Um, it wasn't a crowd this size. Um, but I'm glad to say, you know, working with the chief and my fellow firefighters, you know, we got the pipe band and the honor guard, and we've, you know, made sure that, that this ceremony will last for long after we're gone. Um, you know, over the years, the anthracite was the first kind of a memorial we had. Um, years later, we built the memorial outside. Uh, recently, we purchased uh, the old Seagrave Squad A that actually responded to the fire uh, that was, and it'll be down, it won't be here today because of the construction will be down the hall at the breakfast. And the most major memorial that we have and that we'll always have is us being here today. So I'd like to thank everybody for being here and being part of this ceremony. You know, we remember the 13 firefighters that gave their lives only a few feet away. We remember the children that were lost, who lost their fathers that day. We remember the wives who lost their husbands, and we remember their sacrifice. You know, 9-11 happened in the chant, you know, the, the mantra of we remember um, kind of came about. But it was, it was here long before that, and even before that by firefighters. And it'll continue in the future. Um, we'll always remember what happened here on this day in 1941, the dedication to duty, the dedication to one another, and the ultimate sacrifice that was given by everybody that day. I'd also like to remember today in your prayers that you remember those defending freedom around the world in our armed services. Uh, please also remember our brothers and sisters, police officers, emergency medical technicians that are working today out on the front lines. And please remember all those that have given the ultimate sacrifice when called upon. With that, I'd like to now take roll call. I'd ask everybody to please stand. Details are to Captain John F. Carroll, Ladder Company 3. <laughs> Lieutenant Raymond A. Mitchell, Engine Company 4. <laughs> Firefighter Matthew E. McGarry, Ladder Company 3. <laughs> Firefighter Roy A. McCarrigan, Squad A. <laughs> Firefighter Dennis P. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter William J. Murphy, Squad A. Firefighter Daniel C. O'Brien, Squad A. Firefighter George A. Collins, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Frederick F. Kelly, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Martin E. Lippa, Engine Company 1. Firefighter Henry E. Sullivan, Engine Company 1. Firefighter John M. McNeil, Ladder Company 1. Firefighter Bartholomew Herlihy, Ladder Company 1. All off! On!
I'd like to thank the Brockton Fire Honor Guard for being here, the Brockton Police Honor Guard, and the Brockton Firefighter Pipes and Drums. Also, a special thanks to retired Chief Galligan, as the uh, current chief had spoken. Um, you know, he runs the Historical Society up in North Pearl Street. Um, they're open, uh, I believe, every other Sunday, so he's always willing to give tours. He loves doing that. So please, uh, but I want to thank him for the display out, out front and, and preserving our history. At this time, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Father Matt Westcott, uh, one of our three fire chaplains, for the closing prayer. And I'd like to recognize uh, Father McCoy, one of our chaplains, who's also here. Uh, Father Westcott. I invite you to join me in prayer. Lord God, we gather with hearts full of pride and gratitude, proud of the dedication of the men that we memorialize today, proud of the dedication in their heritage and history of the brave men and women of the current Brockton Fire Department and Brockton Police. We also ask, Lord, for increased resolve. May we here be citizens worthy of the sacrifice made by these men and by their successors. And I make this prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you, Father Matt. So I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, immediately following the, um, the ceremony, we're going to have a collation down at Union Hall, 80 Perkins Ave. Uh, we have breakfast, new kitchen. So we'll cooking the breakfast down there again. Um, and immediately following the uh, ceremony, we're going to do a wreath laying at the memorial outside. So I'd like to welcome uh, for the retreat of the colors uh, with the Brockton Firefighters Pipes and Drums on their retreat. Thank you.